In studio with the Admiral Bill Stebblefield. William. Good morning, Rob. Great to be here. Beautiful and day. Maria Lawrenson. Good morning. Perfect posture on the high chair. She's an example for all of us, Bill. <laughs> it, she is. She is. In many ways, Rob, many ways, not just posture, but across the board. Well, she's I don't know. Board. She's an example no. that we should emulate. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. She cut you off right away. She Stubble. did. She I did. I've got to keep her around, actually. Yeah. That's the only person I've ever known who's been able to cut you it's off. It's a look. Uh, Maria gives me the look. Teresa, who you'll introduce <laughs> in a second, gives me the look, and I just shut up. You know, these I women freezes. have power over you. Bill. They do. They do. Right. Let's uh, meet the look. Teresa, <laughs> the look McCabe uh, in studio from WVU Medicine. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning. Great to be here. I don't particularly like this high chair. It reminds me of a bar stool, but I'm going to sit the way Maria's sitting so yeah. that we nice look and the tall. same. And you like a margarita. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Wrap some pretzels. <laughs> Anything. And Dana DeJarnett. Dana, good morning to you. Good morning. How's things? Very good. Thank you. Good, Glad good. To be here. This is like this is like your annual appearance on the show. That's right. Teresa brings me out every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, I she, do. She has that power. I do. Yeah. Well, plus we went to the chamber breakfast together, so you know we thought we'd just. You're on the circuit. Right, we're yeah. on the circuit. That's today. right. Oh, that's yes. good. Where are you headed next? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, back to the office for a while. Not if I yeah. get you a couple of margaritas. No, that's there. true. <laughs> yeah. Might have to just stay here for a while. At nine ten, might be a might be. Yeah, that's a, a stretch. Uh, yeah, that's I was going to say breakfast margaritas. Yeah. of course. Yeah, there you go. Uh, thank you for, uh, by the way, helping to set us up with Dr. Moffitt. Isn't she wonderful? Infectious disease specialist mm -hmm. over at uh, WVU. Mm -hmm. And a uh, quick question for you. We talked with Delegate Larry Kump yesterday, and he mentioned uh, certificate of need repeal was still a discussion. Mm -hmm. that, uh, That's what I understand. He, he, it he still was involved is. in that, too. Uh, what are you hearing about certificate of need, Maria? I'm oh, sorry. Um, I just talked to Maria about that for us. That's Teresa? Right. Uh, just as you said and as Delegate uh, Kump said, I mean, it's still there. Um, there, are several, there. There are several bills that involve certificate of need, but from what I understand, there doesn't seem to be a lot of movement. So I guess we shall see what happens between now and the end mm -hmm. of the session. Yeah, I mean, because the last three days, you never know. Yeah, there's a bill that true. comes out, and you're like, where did that that's come from? True. And, so. and every year, it seems like there's always some sort of legislation introduced in the West Virginia uh, legislature regarding certificate of need. It's always a hot, hot topic. Mm -hmm. but, but unless so it was far, nothing is really, um, yeah. you know. But unless it was part of the crossover, uh, well, it's it's dead for this year. So we can see what may come bubble up. Yeah, I was going to say because somebody can attach something yes. to something else, mm -hmm. and then all of yeah. a sudden you're like, and I Where understand does this that come happens from? quite frequently. Yeah. And yes. the, in the end, uh -huh. yeah, yes. exactly. So. Dana, let's talk about your role with this uh, room here this morning because we don't bring you out of the locker room for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> there's right. something else you got to do while you're here. Yes, there's special special points I have to make. Absolutely. And, yeah. um, so what we have coming up for March is it's Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. And so we have the Fit Kits, which is something that you can do a test at home. Um, you send in... Uh, the, the testing kit or whatever back to the hospital and we test it and we'll give you the results but um, it's a, in place of a colonoscopy some people are afraid to get a colonoscopy colonoscopy you may be too young to have a colonoscopy your insurance might not cover it and we are seeing colon cancer in younger ages now so it's a good thing to have this done you do need to do it yearly if you're having this done um, just to keep it going with colonoscopy sometimes it can be 10 years at mm -hmm. most depending on your results you might have to go back in three or five years um, but if you do get a positive result with this you do go on then to have a colonoscopy and I I know someone who did this because they were afraid of colonoscopy she was in her 60s, or, and so she did the fit kit at home, found out it was positive, went on to have a colonoscopy and had three polyps and was able to have those removed. So mm -hmm. that's the key is that if you catch it early, yes. have those removed, and then it will not go into cancer. A uh, couple of uh, questions for you. Why are people afraid of colonoscopy? Oh, one. it could be they're afraid of the prep, which I don't think it's that bad. Think of it as a spa cleanse, but <laughs> it's a cleanse, well, all right. I'm, it is I a would cleanse say because yeah. I just had a colonoscopy back in uh, January, and now they're offering uh, the um, pills versus having to drink. You drink, you take pills with water yeah. versus the cocktail, <laughs> sludge. and nobody seems to like. Um, and it was a breeze. I mean, I would highly recommend that um, if you're and the providers now here at WVU Medicine are offering that. As I've also found out, you can also eat some expired meat. That will also help <laughs> flush out everything that you have too. No, I don't think no that's red meat. Yeah. Yeah. No red no, meat. Close no. to. No. Yeah. I, I'm also one who's always nervous about 
anesthesia, although this is not, it's yes. more like a twilight, but that could be something people are fearful about. I think it's, it's yeah. surgery. I mean, you yeah. go to a surgery center to have, yeah. you know, um, a colonoscopy. But it's not Either. surgery, it's not like cutting you and no, throwing you back no, up. Just looking still, in. No, but you are there, in. you're a patient, you check in, you're in a mm-hmm. room, you know, the anesthesiologist or mm-hmm. CRNA comes in, you know. I mean, All that it's, stuff. Yeah, I mean, and you are asleep. When, when, when I went for my so. first colonoscopy, uh, I had never been put under before, mm-hmm. right? And, and I said, first and foremost, how long does this take to work when they put the thing in your veins? And they said, for some people, a minute. Some people go out faster than that. And they put that in. And I was, before I could count to three, it was out. And then I woke up. And I remember the nurse in the prep room said to me, have you ever had one before? I said, no. She said, you're going to wake up and you're going to think, I just had the greatest sleep mm-hmm. of Oh, I life. think that yeah. all the time. The I'm like, they, oh, they, I want to do this. tell you, this is going to be the best sleep you're yes. going to get. And I know. woke up and I was like, I've never slept that good before <laughs> in my life. That was yeah. amazing. How long was that for? Two, three days? They're like 30 minutes. Yeah. 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 Well, give me more of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they've lowered the age. I'm sorry, Bill. They've lowered the age. They used to recommend 50. They've now brought it down to what, 45, 45. Dana? 45. Yeah, 45 is a recommendation. And then if you have family history, it might even be younger and, than that. And I you know, I'm. I have a friend whose 33 year old son is fighting stage four colon cancer right now, mm. and um, it was one of the. It's lifestyle. I mean, they're finding all kinds of things, and just a pervasive amount in younger people. Correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. It is hitting at younger ages, and I don't think they've solved the problem yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we had a 28 year old the... female on the show about mm-hmm. 10 years ago who had colon cancer. 28 years old. You don't mm-hmm. want to ignore the symptoms either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We, we hear so much about colon cancer, uh, and, and you, you mentioned rectal cancer when you came in. It's my understanding that more people die of rectal cancer than most any other. Are there demographics or the ages that's more prevalent for uh, rectal cancer than, the, uh, than other cancers? That one I do not know. Yeah. Yeah, I but again, we don't we don't hear as much about rectal cancer, but uh, the ones that have it, it's uh, it's it's bad. It's and really sometimes bad, it's yeah. just the whole word colorectal yeah. cancer yes. too. Yes. So it's just yeah. one big. But we do know that in this area, we have higher rates of colon cancer mm-hmm. um, and other types of yeah. cancer. All right, moving along to something more cheerful. Excuse me a second. Let me pick. No, up. We, we why? Can't go. Why? Do you have any idea of why we have more in this area? Oh, it could be a multi-factor. It could be, okay. you know, you got your genetic factors, but you have your lifestyle factors. You have your social determinants of health is like, you know, how what's the living conditions, the access to healthy food, you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Access to health care in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as we say, yeah. if people aren't getting the regular screenings yeah. okay. or aren't, you know, going yeah. to get regular oh, physical. Avoid yes, foods that are bad for you. Eat foods that are good for you. Why? Because <laughs> foods that are bad for you lead to colon cancer. Colon okay. cancer. The one good thing about, I mean, a colonoscopy or having these screening, this screening done in particular is you can prevent colon cancer. Yeah. So if yeah. you catch it early and get those polyps removed, then mm-hmm. you've, I mean, it's like a mammogram. They're going to find a spot. You know, you, you then you go through all this testing and that kind of stuff. And, you, you know, you're a long treatment road. It may be that you have this test done, you get those polyps removed, and you're good. You yeah, know? I had three polyps removed. Me too. Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And it, you don't feel anything. Mm-hmm. Right? You're out, and you wake up, and you don't even know. They just say eat soft foods for a while. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I had one the first time I had a colonoscopy, and so now I have to have them every five years and haven't had one since. So. It's a good thing. Yep. Now, uh, if there was anything else in the medical thing that you needed to address, please do that now before yeah. we move on to You might want to give a little oh, specifics right. about where yeah, they can sorry, get the we're fit tests. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We're, about, we're calling it Fit Fridays. Yeah. Fit, fit Fridays Friday. in March. So you commercial. can go to um, I have to keep her urgent, on track. Yeah. Yeah. Our <laughs> urgent care clinics. Yeah, how do you get these things? Um, so the urgent care clinics that are in Berkeley and Jefferson County and then also Dr. Funk's office in Berkeley County and Dr. Dale and Shakespeare office in Jefferson County on Fridays, you can go in there and pick up the fit kit for $25. So mm-hmm. that includes the testing and everything for the $25. And what's the reliability in both uh, uh, false positives and the detection with these fit kits? Um, I think it's a pretty high rate of positive is positive. Because yeah. someone just uh, 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 put on Facebook a second ago that their appointment for a colonoscopy is a year, year and a few months down the road. And well, men in the fact it takes so long to get scheduled. Would not the fit kit do much of uh, what they're asking for? 
Not yeah, everything. I'm mentally not 100%. But. Yeah, because they'll if they find something, detect something in this, you probably might expedite getting your appointment. Yeah, okay. <laughs> then, and yeah. actually, we do have a couple doctors on standby. If people do get positive results from these tests, they will get in quicker because of that. And they were saying, Bill, it's a year down the road before you can get an appointment. Well, appointment. they said uh, available appointment is March 2025. That's the next available appointment? Yep, at oh, least for this in this particular case. All right. Uh, next you got a couple other things you want to get to as well before we run out of time. Oh, yes. yes. Um, we have uh, uh, April 20th. It's our WVU Medicine Children's Gala here in the Eastern Panhandle. Um, that is going to be held at the Holiday Inn. It's a huge event. We usually have between 200 and 250 folks there. It normally sells out. We do still have a few sponsorships available or individual tickets. Individual tickets are two hundred dollars a person but it's a great evening and all of the money um, our theme this year is called uh, the city of lights so it's a vegas theme maria yay a vegas theme um so um they just held the the um, event in morgantown last month and it was a huge success so we're looking forward to having ours here in april and all the money stays here's lo stays here locally we're going to purchase some vision screening machines for our pediatric clinics in berkeley and Jefferson um, and Morgan counties and then um, we are also going to purchase some syringe pumps and then we haven't identified the big pieces of equipment yet that we're going to purchase for the NICU and PEDS uh, clinic and, and OB departments at both hospitals but last year we bought three um, giraffe warmers which they're not toys <laughs> they're basically um, infant warmers that they use um, both in the NICU and the PEDS unit at Berkeley um, and and it, it's sort of self-contained so if the babies have to be transported anywhere they stay in this particular um, piece of equipment that's referred to as a giraffe um, what, but, what um, are those so, cost? Uh, 30, 35,000 35, okay. yeah. and how many of those do you buy? Well, last year we netted a little over a hundred thousand from our um, gala, so we were able to purchase. We purchased two of those. We purchased um, some equipment for our Harpers Ferry Family Medicine Peds Clinic, and then we bought some syringe pumps for our emergency departments at both hospitals and um, the NICU and Peds unit. So. As far as your staffing goes, uh, there's a lot of competition for certain disciplines. Are you fully staffed in all disciplines, or the certain, I guess specialists is a better word, are there certain specialists that you're still looking for, having trouble recruiting? Are you talking about physician specialists or just staffing in general, no, the physician, various departments? Physician or uh, mm -hmm. uh, the medical. Yes, um, but we are having some some success. Um, we, we've, we have been very um, fortunate to be able to recruit uh, a number of physicians in specialty areas where we were well primary care is always one mm -hmm. that we focus on mm -hmm. and fortunately because of the Harpers Ferry Family Medicine Residency Program that helps us you know every year um, recruit um, the majority of those um, physicians coming out of training I will also add that we are or, or mention that we are adding an internal medicine residency program our School of Medicine here in the Eastern Campus um, uh, I think we have one more um, um, survey to go through but um, we should be able then in January 2025 we should be able to select our class of internists to go through in, to go through our internal uh, internal medicine residency program uh, this summer well actually match day I think is um, March. in March yeah. so actually it's this month so we should be able to go ahead and get those providers identified and then they will actually start their internal medicine residency training here in January of 2025. So that will help us tremendously too in recruiting more internal medicine specialists to the area. But we do have, speaking of colonoscopies, gastroenterology is an area where uh, we, we need more gastroenterologists. So we've signed um, a couple of those. Um, one that's going to be starting later this year who um, is a subspecialist um, in, in other areas of gastroenterology. So we're very excited to have him on board and then uh, hope to, to, to really expand um, that program. But we've had a lot of success in, in specialty areas as well as just primary care as well. Yeah, a few years or so ago, the concept of hospitalist mm -hmm. uh, was introduced, and for a lot of us that were from, were more familiar with our personal doctor going through joining us when we were in the hospital is no longer the case. How's the hospitalist been accepted by the uh, the 
the community as a whole. You are correct. When that first occurred, we heard a lot of mom, you know, people didn't want to have to go be hospitalized and not have their primary care physician round on them and so forth. I think people have just accepted it. Now it's the norm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have hospitalists at both Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Center. And we now even have a nocturnist at, at Jefferson. Um, before we had residents, and they still do staff in the evenings as well, but we also have nocturnal hospitalists um, who are there um, working with the residents at night versus just having one of our um, providers on call if they need assistance. We have um, intensivists now who staff our ICU at Berkeley Medical Center, so we do not have um, individual providers um, providing the you know, the critical care any longer so um no that's i say you is does that extend to the emergency room as well no we have our, okay. our emergency medical specialists okay, of yeah. course staff yeah. that and they are now all um employed by wvu medicine mm -hmm. so at both hospitals and they rotate between hospitals mm -hmm. as well so you might see dr Duell, who's our medical director of emergency services at berkeley if you go to the ed at jefferson so um so we have made a lot of a lot we even have um neurologists who are are specifically um do hospital visits so I, we're seeing it expand actually Talk, talk a little bit about the nursing shortage and where you are with nursing. I mean, we heard again, you know, a year ago, post-pandemic uh, mostly, that, you know, the, the hospitals were filled with travel nurses. And where are you right now? We've made a lot of progress in reducing those travelers because that, from a budget standpoint, was, well, we don't even want to talk about it because, of, you know, just an expense that we were not expecting, certainly didn't budget for. So we are down now to, at one point, we had almost you know, 200 travelers during pandemic and post pandemic now we're down to under 100 and it's not just nurses it's it's other areas too some rad techs some um med techs i mean so you know people always think nursing but um so we have made great strides with that and we're also thank goodness um being able to offer employment and they're accepting from local nursing schools so i believe samantha richards our um vp of um, nursing and operations said that we have 35 new nurse hires joining us in may um, and then from the December graduating classes, we had several as well. So we, that is looking much better, I would say. But we've also implemented some new programs to offer assistance to our local nursing students. Um, to you know with with their educational expenses i was going to say and incentives incentives to get our current employees who maybe are patient care techs or medical assistants who want to go back to school and get their nursing degrees so we work very closely with blue ridge um, and with shepherd those are two here in the eastern panhandle that we're we work closely with and we're seeing a lot of benefit now because those um, nursing students are you know completing their degrees uh, getting their licenses and they're their accepting employment and it's not just nurses I mean we we also had a shortage of certified medical assistants particularly in our clinics so we're we're doing some other programs actually with Jefferson County Schools and hope to expand it to Berkeley County it's called the med ed program where um, right now we're doing um, med techs and um, certified medical assistants in their junior and senior year, they're actually uh, going into classrooms, designated classrooms uh, there at Jefferson High. Um, Blue Ridge is coming in, offering the the uh, training. We're doing the you know in uh, hospital training at Jefferson, and so in two years, these students, juniors and seniors, will graduate and they will be offered employment immediately. Um, and we're also actually getting ready to expand that program to rad techs as well. So that's that's one area. And as I said, we're also working with Berkeley County Schools to offer it here, so. Now I gather, Teresa, uh, that the uh, uh, the pipeline of folks, uh, young folks going into nursing is still fairly robust and healthy. Unlike what we may hear from the teachers, whereas fewer and fewer people tend to be wanting to go into education. It seems to be because I know um, Blue Ridge now has two classes, um, two nursing classes of, I believe it's um, 20 or so students each class. 
um, so for two years, so you know they 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 are turning out, um, a, you know, a good number of um, registered nurses in their two-year programs, and you know we are having success um, getting them to come join us at. Berkeley now, or Jefferson Medical Center. Now, as far as being certified or registered nurse, uh, what's the difference between a two-year school and a four-year school? We have both in this area. Please don't say two years. <laughs> no, I'm it sorry. What, what, an associate what's degree or a bachelor, an yeah. a, 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 a associate degree in nursing or a BSN, a bachelor's. Um, but you, in either case, you can be certified as a registered nurse. Oh, absolutely. Nurse. Okay. During the the two-year programs, the two-year programs um, allow you to. Uh, receive all the training clinicals that you need to sit for the um, for the uh, exam and to be a licensed registered nurse. It used to be back before the pandemic, a lot of health systems were going toward they only wanted to hire BSNs. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to hire the associate uh, two-year nursing degree students. But we've seen that. That's something else that I would say that the pandemic uh, impacted. Um, because we're, we're we're not seeing that required, that, you know, in in some of the institutions that went to only hiring BSNs have now gone back. And do you have a contingent of LPNs as well? We uh, have a few LPNs. Yes, and that's a licensed mm -hmm. practical nurse, right. which is a shorter time frame. Yes, of a, that's a one year, I believe. I believe James Rumsey, I, I believe, so. has an mm -hmm. LPN program. Teresa, yes. before we run out of time, you've got a golf tournament coming up again? We do. June um, Monday, June 3rd, we're at the club at Crest Creek this year, um, and we it's our 37th annual Bernie Hutzler Golf Classic, so we're very excited about that. People will be hearing more, seeing more about that on our Facebook page, but anybody who's interested, we are currently um, accepting sponsors and golfers. This is a major fundraiser for you folks during the year. Oh, it is absolutely. We netted seventy-five thousand last year, actually seventy-eight thousand, um, and we were able to purchase a, a equipment for our emergency departments at both hospitals. We have not. We have a list, but we haven't narrowed down yet since we're trying to wrap up on our children's gala. But uh, we will soon be announcing where the funds will be um, going for this year's golf classic. Are you back to pre-pandemic levels with your golfer sponsors and fundraisers? We are. We absolutely are. I'm happy to announce. Is, so. this, is this year the first year for that, or did you get it back last year? Um, actually, no. Last year we exceeded our goal for golf. Um, our goal was 75, and as I said, we netted 78. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we did the, with golf. The, the you know, of course, we didn't have it for two years, and then we brought it back for just like one flight. So that one took baby steps. So children's gala, our we hadn't had it since 219. Mm -hmm. So we were very, very thrilled um, last year to net over a hundred thousand dollars on that event. So. Final thoughts? Anything else? No, and we just appreciate all the support that we get from the community and local businesses because certainly our fundraisers and individuals, individual donors, because our fundraisers, and Maria can attest to this, I mean, we couldn't do it without the mm -hmm. support that we get from individuals and in, in, in the community. So great community here in the Panhandle. Absolutely. Great community. Yeah, I have one other program that I think people might find beneficial, um, chronic pain self-management. We have an in-person class starting at the Charlestown Library on March 13th in the afternoon at 1 o'clock. Um, they can just contact me um, to sign up. But it's a six-week program, but anybody who is dealing with chronic pain issues, it's a really good program to help you through that. Thank you, Dana. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Teresa, as well. Great to be here. Have thank a great you. day. Thank you. Uh, get your parking uh, ticket validated out front before you go, and your ticket for the margarita also. Uh, for Absolutely. Next visit. And you notice there are no intimidating looks from, th right. from Teresa. I know. Not you yet, did, Bill. There were, the questions were okay today, Bill. <laughs> She's not out the door yet, Bill. <laughs>